suppose the time and space would ease the sorrow but every train that leaves today comes back tomorrow and it's those little things that happen stands discloses that remind me of our time of bones and roses upon a table in a drawer Starting with the hitch comes with a hitch lock and you'll see there's also a padlock on the hitch which we use to lock it onto the truck. Uh, there's the manual jack stand that was replaced about 10 years ago. It comes with a draw tight uh, weight distribution hitch. There's the change over propane regulator that was replaced uh, last year and it got broken in Alaska. And uh, there's two propane tanks, one's full, one's a quarter full. You'll see this uh, Jekyll Island plastic license plate. That's covering a scratch mark about an inch and a half wide and seven inches long where the propane tank cover was. It rubbed up against the camper and uh, that's gone now. There is a hitch light there. It's LED. Uh, there are two sewer hose storage cabinets and two sewer hoses that come with it. This is the vent for the air conditioner. It's a window unit. This is what they did in 1999. It's been replaced with a higher BTU heat pump, so it has both heat and AC. There's also a new leveler. It's installed about three years ago. Uh, what else? You'll see there's a cable up here. That's for the backup camera. It's on the back of the trailer. Uh, if you want to use that, you'll have to hook it up yourself. There's a uh, RCA jack there. Working my way around here, this is another vent for the air conditioner. That's what the original vent in the front looked like. And you can see there's another new leveler here. This uh, unit has the RV style door instead of the curved doors like you see on scamps and the shorter casitas, which do tend to leak. New step carpet, I think last year. Originally there was a louvered vent here for the refrigerator and I replaced it with uh, a plastic vent. This is the standard for the new casita and uh, makes it easier to get at that. I'm going to show the uh, interior of that later on. Uh, you'll see here there's a metal plate here. It's a little uh, crooked because I put it in. Uh, this is to keep the door from uh, crushing. It also allows this latch to keep the door closed. I put one of these pads here. You get these at the dollar store. It's a furniture pad and it works really well. You'll see there's also a dead bolt in here that was added. Uh, the keys for these are the keys for every RV ever made, so there's really no security. This casita is well loved. You can see it's been to almost every state in the Union and most of the Canadian provinces, including uh, Newfoundland and all the way to Alaska. Uh, we don't have anything against Kansas or anything, it's just we went there by an, in an earlier RV years ago. This has the Fiamma F45. S awning, which we installed, and you'll see my installation video on my YouTube channel. Did not come with it, but this is the standard awning that casitas come with, and the brackets came from casita. You'll also see there's some drip rail, stick on drip rail up there. Uh, when the awning is out, if you're out here in the rain, which we were once in Provincetown cooking lobsters and drinking martinis, the water would splash on you, so the drip rail is an attempt to help that. 
You'll also notice that the uh, dots here are chrome. Uh, if you go on the Casito website, you'll realize these Casitas all have these little plastic dots on them for they call rivets. They're not really rivets. There's some sort of kind of bolt and they do pop off. I've replaced several of them with stainless steel bolts underneath there. This has been replaced. Uh, we hardly ever use it. Uh, there's also 12 volt outlets on either side by the spare tire so you can pump up your tires if necessary or run accessories. And there's also a, a courtesy 110 volt outlet. It does have a furnace with bug screens have been added. The wheels are standard. Uh, ST20575R14 tires. These were replaced last year on our back, way back from Alaska. You can see we've painted them Rust-Oleum metallic blue and put fancy stainless steel uh, trim rings on it to sort of jazz it up a bit. The brakes were uh, replaced in 2016, I believe, and the bearings are repacked in 2018 before we went to Alaska. That was probably about 10,000 miles ago. It might be ready for repacking. Uh, mud flaps have been added. There's a catch I've added for the baggage compartment, storage compartment, and that water drain tap is new in the hose. There's the uh, bracket for the Fiamma awning. And what else? We have new rear LED marker lights. Uh, we were caught in a hailstorm outside of El Paso, broke our turn signals, didn't break anything else. Uh, and we put in LED uh, brake lights and those are LED backup lights. There are very few incandescent bulbs left on this. As I said before, there's a backup camera here. If you want to play with that, it comes on with the running lights. And I add these marker lights, which are not working right now, but I will replace them shortly. Uh, spare tire cover doesn't have any tears in it, but it's getting a little old. We've probably gone through four or five of these. Uh, expect to go through a couple of them. Here's a tip. Uh, put your spare tire in a plastic bag first, because otherwise the rubber will le leach through the white covers. It has the <clears throat> jack stands that are from a pop-up type camper. They work pretty well, but the newer casitas have a better uh, jack stand. This is an interesting thing. This is actually a screen uh, that we put on here. This is something they put on motorhomes and it's held in with snaps and we don't take it off except to clean the window. Then there's a tool inside the drawer to take it, those snaps off. If you just try to pull it, you'll tear it. This keeps the sun out because we couldn't put an awning on here. There's an LED marker lamp up there. I put that in because there was a TV antenna there and uh, it broke. I replaced it with one from eBay and uh, <clears throat> that broke and we don't watch the TV anyway so I put this LED marker lamp in there. What else? We have a side awning on here which is from A&E. Uh, it's a very nice for privacy and shade. You'll see that there's some duct tape on the top of it. I've ordered new canvas for it and we will uh, update this video when we uh, get the new canvas in. And you see there's a side windows. Hot water heater was replaced about two years ago. It's a manual unit. Uh, battery, I think, is about two years old. It's a very heavy duty uh, Walmart Everstart deep cycle. Uh, there's the power connection. It's uh, 30 amps. It comes with, with an adopter, I believe. Uh, it does come with blocks and wedges so you can level it. Uh, here's the sewer and uh, gray water. The gray water uh, pipe cracked in. Uh, Alaska and we did patch it and put in a new pipe and there's no leaks and it works great. Painted it black so it matches uh, the newer casitas. Uh, we had some of this leftover screen. I put it on the bathroom window and that gives you a lot of privacy in there and also you can leave the window open and lets the air in. More of this drip rail. I had some left over. I was worried that the water would come into the bathroom if I left the window open, but this allows us to leave the window open even when it's raining. And with the awning out, you can leave these windows open when it's raining, which is nice when it's cool out. Here's the refrigerator section with the covers removed. Uh, we try to keep it fairly clean. It runs on 110 volts, 12 volts, or gas. Uh, I, we usually run on gas or 110 volts. The 12 volt setting will drain the battery very quickly, and if you have it plugged into your car, it will drain your car very quickly, as we found out the hard way on the Blue Ridge Parkway waking up one morning and finding our car wouldn't start. Um, and then the upper cabinet here, the original wooden 2x4 air deflector has been replaced with the uh, aluminum one, as suggested by the people on the Casita website. We've also added some insulation in here. 
It works very well for a 20 year old. Okay, we're outside again, and here's the Fiamma F45S awning. This came from see there's Miami, Florida. Velcro straps here. And again, I was on the Casita forum, and somebody said, oh, you should do that, you know, keep it from opening up when you're going down the road. I don't think it's a real risk, but you know what? I spent a thousand dollars in three days putting this thing on and I didn't want it to get damaged so I put these straps on and then I put them inside the camper when we're not using it. The awning uh, crank and uh, rafter attach to these brackets inside. You can also see there's a smoke detector. I just put a new battery in it and then this is also the control for the under Oh, that was loud. Uh, lighting. There's a 135 different patterns. Thank you. No CO2. And there's even a remote control. You can control it from wherever. I usually unplug this because if you leave it plugged in, even with the power off, sometimes if there's a voltage spike, the uh, the lights will flash. It's made in China. Uh, no guarantee on how long that will last, but it's we've had it on there for three or four years, and it seems to be holding up pretty well. So let's take off this crank here and we'll uh, crank up the uh, awning. The way you do this is you first crank the awning, you attach this crank here, it's kind of hard to do this and hold the camera at the same time, and you basically crank this out just a bit. Now if it gets stuck, which it does sometimes, just tap it with your fist. It didn't get stuck this time and uh, it'll come out just a little bit. You don't want to have it come out more than I think two or three feet. It's not meant to cantilever like some of these other awnings. And then once you have that out, you pull out these arms like this. They're tucked inside and they come down and they're a little wet because I guess I just washed the camper or it rained or something. And you tighten the awning arms and you take the other one out. You, the weight of the awning shouldn't be resting entirely on the camper. This, this awning arm Oops. And then you tighten it up. Now you see there's a bracket here. You can also attach the bracket to there once you crank it out. And I'm going to crank it out. You're going to might hear it squeak a bit. It's very normal for these to squeak. Don't try to lubricate them. Uh, they have plastic parts and they just are self-lubricating. And you can see it's turning out. I'm going to shut off the camera here and crank it out. So here's the awning cranked out. It's a little windy today. And uh, you'll see there's a mark here uh, that shows you how far it where you're reaching the end of the roll. You don't want to crank it all the way out to the end. And uh, like I said, you can attach the brackets to the camper, and that's helpful when it's windy like a day like today. Or they can stand freestanding on the ground. You can put a peg in the ground. Or sometimes we bungee these to a, a picnic table or something like that. Now, for windy conditions, what we can do is put this rafter in. You'll see it says up and out. That means uh, when you're storing it, put this end up, and you'll see there's a little ring there. It shows you where to tighten that so it fits in the storage bracket. And then out, meaning this part goes in the out. Because for some reason, they made it so it only goes one way. So you put this bracket onto here, and uh, tighten up the knob. And then what I usually do, bring it back in so there's tension on it and that helps on witty days. I, I noted before I put these screws in here there's a allen wrench on one of the key rings if you want to take so this off. View of the kitchen we have some pots that we're getting all new stuff for our new camper if you want the old pots they're yours to take with you if you come here from away and you're going to go camping right away you can use those along with some melamine dishware and whatnot. Uh, you can see here there's also a wooden cutting board that slides over the sink and there's also that's the new bar uh, faucet we put in. The original faucet was very low and it was very hard to wash your pots. There's also a spice rack in the back here. These uh, replaced the original wire rack which 20 years later fell off. Uh, these are actually held on with double-sided tape and they actually work really well. And you would think the spices would fall off going down the road, but they don't. So it's worked really well for us. In my spare parts box, I have a few extra of these stick-on spice things. Uh, so sometimes they do break if you put something heavy on there. Uh, here's the stove. It's original. Uh, and it works. I'll demonstrate it here. 
you just uh, have to light it manually. Everything on here is manually. The hot water heater is manual. The refrigerator is manual. The battery could be completely dead and the hot water heater, refrigerator, and stove will still work. Uh, unlike modern campers, including the one we're buying, uh, where everything is on circuit boards and you need 12 volts electronics to maintain everything. The nice thing is everything's spark ignition on the new campers. This is old school. There's a nice cover here and uh, it's a little nicked up. I uh, added this uh, chrome door trim. It actually sort of cleans it up a bit. I probably should have put some on here as well. Uh, there's a drawer here. This is the tool to take off the rear sunshade. This is the crank for the overhead vent. Now you're probably saying, why don't you just screw that in there? Because I would hit my head on it, that's why. Uh, down below here, there's another cabinet. There's some storage things for your olive oil and other condiments. And there's a nice light in here too. We've added a shelf and uh, also put the flooring in through there. It was all carpet, which gets pretty nasty. And there's another door here. And you'll see there's a little rack there. I usually put uh, cleaning supplies there. Here is the furnace. Uh, the only thing we've ever done to this furnace is I replaced these screws with stainless steel screws and painted this with uh, Rust-Oleum khaki. And here's the thermostat. Uh, it's right a little here. loud, but I turned on the furnace just so you can see it working. And uh, when you turn it on, it uh, First the fan comes on, then after a few seconds the igniter, this is the, one of the few things that does have a 12 volt igniter and of course a 12 volt fan. And uh, then it ignites and then starts blowing hot air, which is starting to ignite. I guess while I'm doing HVAC stuff, I'll get the remote control and uh, we'll turn on the air conditioner. Right now it's in fan mode, we'll change the mode. Now it's in heat mode, now in something called eco saver, which goes on and off. And now we'll put it in air conditioning mode. I'll turn the temperature down to the lowest setting, which is 60. And you can see the uh, nice cold air coming out. There is a little fan up here you can turn on. This blows some of the air down into it so it gets sucked in. And then you can also turn on this little fan here. And uh, there's a little switch behind it has two speeds and it also rotates if you want it to and that sort of keeps things cool and of course the fantastic fan you can turn this on and it exhausts the fan out or brings air in and it has a thermostatic control three speeds and uh, in and out switch and if that's not enough you can always open this and just let natural these are the new chairs and you can see the fabric uh, reminds me very much of a pantsuit my mother had in 1968, but I think it's very nice. Uh, there's a slide on here that I added because originally the chairs came out to here and it really made it hard to get through the camper. So you can slide these out and then uh, they do swivel. And then when you're not using them or they're in their way, you can just push them in. Uh, we also cut an inch and a half off the inside of this table and added two brackets which were originally part of a television thing so now it's really sturdy and when you open the refrigerator door it doesn't hit the table as it did originally. Now the window treatments I was going to replace because they are getting a little old. The original ones were aluminum and uh, Venetian blinds and they uh, wore out. They got ratty and dirty and we replaced them with these plastic Venetian blinds. Now some people prefer curtains and if you go on the casita site you'll see a lot of casita club forum you'll see a lot of people talking about replacing the curtains so i didn't replace these we cleaned them uh some of them have a i think this one here is a broken i don't know what you call the veins on the blind and uh they're serviceable but if you don't like them you can take them out and replace them there you can see the speakers there's four speakers in here for the stereo and maybe I'll turn that on and see if I can play you some music. And I'm trying to think what else is in here. That's, let's take a look in the bathroom. There's a full scale mirror here. There's a little damage on the bottom of the bathroom door and that door as well. It must be water damage, 20 years. Uh, the bathroom is all fiberglass. You can see the sink is yellowed a bit. This is very typical of older casitas. There's also a slight crack here. 
Now, like I said, I'm trying to disclose everything, not, no surprises. We've added this little mirror, which is kind of handy for if you want to shave or something. Uh, and a little baggage clip to hold it in place so it doesn't bang going down the road. And there's your shower nozzle. This is a very nice wet bath. If you have used to take this to Oshkosh and it's nice after a day of hot looking at airplanes in the dust to just come in here and take a nice hot shower. There's a little toilet paper dispenser here. I don't know if the previous owner added this. It was held on with double-sided tape. I've pop riveted it in place to keep it from falling off and added a piece here so that the, 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 I don't know, the toilet paper roll holder doesn't slide back and forth. Uh, and there's a little thing to hold a bar of soap the previous owner added. Little things for tablecloth or washcloths. Uh, this was added here to hold your accessories. The new casitas have a cabinet here, which I guess gives you more room, but boy, it's nice to be able to put your leg there. I'm a big guy, I'm 6'2", and I like to have my room. This is where the original rack was, and it's been replaced. It's starting to get a little dinged up, but you can buy these online. I bought like six of them for uh, $12 or something stupid, and that's why I've added them. So I've added another one down here, and there's a little place for your toilet brush. And there's an LED light in here and some hooks and whatnot. This is where the shower curtain attaches. Uh, we found it was just kind of a pain in the butt to use and that's probably why the door is a little delaminated at the bottom, but oh well, I'm not running a casita museum. This is uh, outdated, but it's a Jensen RV stereo. It has a CD player, it also has an input for your memory stick. You can load music into a number of formats, including WMA or iTunes or whatever, and it will play the songs off of that. It's also AM, FM, and uh, has an auxiliary input both here and in the back. And it also has in here, this is really antiquated, an iPod interface. If you have an old iPod, you can load a bunch of music on there and play it. There's a remote control for it, battery operated. And there's an extra battery in, in the compartment there. And uh, there's actually a infrared remote control receiver outside so you can control the volume outside Here as well. are the storage cabinets above the refrigerator. On the newer models, this is where a built-in microwave would appear. On this model, uh, the microwave just went in this compartment, which originally was carpeted. And I, you can see I've put this wooden flooring in there. I've also added a light in here so you can see. And what we use this for, since we don't microwave our food, was we put our liquor and wine in here. and. Uh, use it as a bar. If you'd like to use a microwave, you can buy one at Walmart for $20 and shove it in here. I also put this little 12 volt fan in there to keep it cool since it's right above the refrigerator, which generates heat. Up above here is your pantry cabinet. And I added a latch here to hold this door open after spending 10 years of hitting my head on it. I think I'd figure that out. I put another 12 volt light in here. These are all LED and uh, also got rid of the carpet here and put um, wooden paneling. Uh, on the camera here, this shows much more yellow than it actually is in real life, but it is 20 years old. But uh, here's a tip, uh, use Clorox wipes. You can wipe the carpet and it keeps it clean and sanitized. And uh, what else? There's an outlet in here for your microwave so you can plug that in. There's also cabinets here This for your dishes. Again, the microwave electronics cabinet, storage for clothing, more storage for clothing. There's another 12 volt outlet there for a fan or something. Uh, there's a 12 volt fan here. It's a little noisy, but we uh, has two speeds and it rotates, and that's useful for circulating air when you uh, are running the air conditioner. Another cabinet up here, and there's even a little clothesline in here you can run across into here hang up your towels and let them dry if you want and what else the ceiling like I said the casitas are all carpeted and uh, the carpet of the ceiling is sort of started to fall down a bit and what I did was I put glue up in the underneath the carpet and glued it in place and also added these ceiling lights which hold it up and this is the fantastic fan, which the guts of the fan have been replaced. The blades broke. Uh, this has the new pop-out screens. There's two extra screens, I believe. 
they can be taken out and cleaned. And then we added this extra vent here, which is nice because if you're dry camping and you're not running the air conditioning, you can uh, let the air out and also lets the light in. And there's another LED light. The uh, camper comes with two sets of keys. It has all the keys for the deadbolt and various accessories and the hitch lock. And these lovely key fobs are given to us by a nice couple in Newfoundland. They show mummers. Down here you'll see the safe. It's one of these safes that you might see in a motel room. Uh, I think I set the combination uh, reset it to one, two, three, four, five. You can reset the combination any way you want. The instructions are inside the safe on how to reset the combination along with get some more spare keys um, if you want. There's also another key here in one of these little magnetic things if you want to go away for the day and you don't want to carry keys with you. This is very handy for putting your passport or cash or checkbook or whatever in. It just was really nice to have a place to keep your stuff and know where everything was. This is the heat pump. It's a LG. Uh, works pretty well. Uh, unfortunately, since it's here in the doorway, it tends to cool the doorway. And that's why we've added things like the fan up there to circulate the air. And you can see this little throw rug here, the new flooring uh, throughout. And I have a video on the installation of that. There is an extra box of flooring. I think it has at least 12 pieces in it. So if you want to repair or replace any of these planks, you can do that. Okay, one more thing. Uh, we haven't had a total eclipse. Uh, what I've done is I've installed uh, these foil window covers and uh, what we do is we use these when we're in storage it keeps the temperature down there you can see the curtain the Venetian blind is up you can see it it's just a bubble wrap cover and these are made for each one of the windows and even the door uh, they also come in real handy when uh, if it's really really hot out or really really cold out if you're down in Key West and it's uh, 100 degrees in the sun and you're parked right out in the blazing sun this will help keep it cool uh, if you're up in Alaska as we were and it's snowing as it did in August uh, this will help keep you warm there's also covers for both the fantastic fan that attaches with snaps and the other vent which attaches with velcro and uh, those are included with the camper and uh, there are some spare parts that come with this camper. Here's an extra dome for the roof vent, fantastic fan. These are screens for the fantastic fan. They change the design so they pop out, which is nice because you can remove them for cleaning. So those are two uh, new screens. I just put a new screen in, and those come with it. In addition, here's this box of spare parts. that includes extra wheel bearings and seals, uh, some various trim pieces. Uh, marker lamps and uh, an extra trim ring. There are three trim rings on the wheels of the camper. Those are the uh, bases um, for the dinette table that go underneath the dinette table. There's the original shower curtain which you never used. The turn signal lens. Here's the original chairs. They're in pretty good shape. Um, if you don't want these things you can just leave them behind. Here's the original cushions for the dinette. They've been wrapped up as you can see they're in pretty good shape. We've never used them other than to sleep on them and we had a topper on them put on by the previous owner. Of course as I said before we have a new mattress in there so that's why something else we did. We've added outside speakers and I'll demonstrate those shortly. There's two of them. They're very low. Uh, we haven't had any problems with them. I think we broke one in Alaska and I replaced it with a new one. And they sound okay. It's nice to play background music uh, at the campsite if you want. Of course, nowadays everybody uses Bluetooth, but if we put these in, gee, almost 10 years ago, back before smartphones were a big thing. Uh, this is the grill for the heat pump. Uh, as you can see, the original heat pump or air conditioning cover only came up to about here. And you can see some holes there where the original cover was, unfortunately. Uh, so we've enlarged this to get full uh, flow from the air conditioner and put in a protective mesh grill that flows better than the louvered type. Uh, 
to protect this from going on the road, the factory one was a uh, vinyl cover. We've taken a piece of aluminum and stretched some vinyl over it and then put some door edge guard on it. And this makes a solid cover that keep rocks from hitting the air conditioner. And here's the uh, air conditioner cover installed and this keeps the rocks off and it looks somewhat attractive. Make us cry when we are so tired.